I am absolutely sure everyone saw all the carnage that was going on at the mud race, especially on the start. And why is it that so many people crashed? Yes, obviously mud is very slippery. It makes you move side to side. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because tomorrow I'm going to break down proper riding technique on how to ride in the mud. But for now, why did so many riders go down? Here, LCQ, Justin Barsha. Watch what happens to him. He reaches for a roll-off. Hand comes off. And the bike just goes tang slapper at 30, 40 miles an hour. Somehow he saves it. But this was caused more by this whole shot device than anything. Yes, when you take the hands off the handlebar, you're susceptible to hitting little bumps and having that front end go all over the place. When the motorcycle is compressed 90% of the stroke, you're just more susceptible to the external forces that are slowing you down, which is the terrain. Mud is very thick. It's very sticky, but you can push it around and you slide. When you ride in mud, you don't hit your brakes a whole lot because it's going to stop you normally. And this is added for a first turn where they're hauling freaking ass. So they've got to use their brakes a little bit. So it's just compiling the forces that are going against this motorcycle and added that Barsha decided to try to grab a roll off so that he could see his hand comes off. Because as soon as his hand comes off, then the bike starts grabbing and it pushes and gets him in a a tang slapper and luckily he's able to use his riding ability and get back on the bike like it's a, a bucking bronco but truthfully this is caused by the whole shot device never never do you see a mud race where riders have whole shot devices that's just not a normal thing and the only reason why it's here is because of how much traction you have on the metal gate and with the mud well you're not going to be jumping high enough or hitting stuff fast enough to pop that whole shot button out to let the suspension actually move because again when the suspension is locked it doesn't want to move and that's when you see a lot of stuff move where you get kicked or whatnot is because the suspension is there to free flow and have you go around here we have sexton and yes i will talk tomorrow about all the start technique and whatnot but watch sexton as he's coming down here as soon as he starts to let off and get on the brakes what is the terrain doing to his motorcycle Goes in there, boom, it slides and it catches. And what's another reason why it slides and it catches? Well, yes, the mud, but he's still locked in the only two inches of travel that he has left. That suspension is not able to move. So it, it grabs and boom, and it grabbed on one of the ruts. And so Sexton is trying to lean the bike over and one of the ruts grab him and it almost hide sides him and take him up. But then what happened Jason Anderson? Well, if we back up a little bit more, here's Jason Anderson. I almost thought he ran into the back of Tomac, but that is not what happened either. So if we just slow this down and we start moving, moving, moving. And you could almost say that even Malcolm hit him, but no, it wasn't until after Jason Anderson got stuck in some of the mud where uh, I'm bringing up the argument that that might not have happened if he had more travel just totally stops him and it's ironic that it's happening at the end of the start straight where they're really hard on the brakes look at how thick this stuff is so as soon as you're getting off of accelerating and you're also braking those forces are just adding to the to you basically the inertia of you hitting a brick wall and that's exactly what it looks like that happens is he hits a brick wall and he takes out quite a bit of riders Look at what happened. I can't make out this rider on the end, but same thing. Boom, goes down. Yes, would this have happened if they did have full travel? Probably. However, I bring up the question that it would be less likely for it to happen to so many riders if they didn't have these gosh darn whole shot buttons. So what's interesting is the same thing happened to Jason Anderson that happened to Barsha is... 
he takes his hand off the handlebars to grab a roll off and hits that hard mud and the suspension can't move at all. So what does it do? It just grabs him and gets him into this tang slapper and just acts as if he hit a brick wall and crashes. And I believe Ferrandez ends up running right into the back of him. And it's interesting. He does the same thing as he tries to grab a tear off. You just saw him right here. Because they have tear-offs over the roll-offs so that once they're on the track, their vision is completely clear, so then they can start doing the little strips. Ferrandis tries to grab a tear-off, and then he's running right into Anderson that is coming here. Watch Jason. Ferrandis gets another tear-off. Jason tries to go for a tear off and just instantly goes over and that's when Fernandez runs into the back of him. Here, we'll watch that in real time. But there's a lot of factors here. A, it's super gooey and muddy. It's going to grab the bike regardless as if they had full travel. Second, they're taking their hands off the handlebar, which is usually a no-no, unless you're in the air, because then there's no external forces pushing against you. And third, could it have been saved by having the suspension not compressed down? On the topic of mistakes, don't make this one. Make sure you go over to CompleteRacingSolutions.com. Sign up for their yearly program. They've got a new deal with Express Training that focuses on people that have less than 30 minutes a day. You'll get all the standard benefits of performance, functional fitness, nutrition, live webinars, partnership discounts. Plus, you'll get the training programs that are for anybody that has a very busy schedule. Make sure you go over to CompleteRacingSolutions.com. This one's just for giggles. We've got Freezy taking more people out. He actually didn't take out Clayson, but he got close. He's going to lose control here, slide, cut Clayson off, and Clayson's going to try to react, but ends up endoing himself. And Freezy goes on to continue to lead the LCQ, but then eventually the bike gives out on him. But <laughs> uh, it's just interesting that it's, again, people are just falling down all over the place near Freezy. You can see Clayson. Clayson tries to accelerate once he sees Freezy coming over into his line, and he just goes pinned right into a tough block, unfortunately. And, man, Jet had, sure, a bad day. We'll see if he can come back from this. I'm positive he'll be able to, but here, what happens and how does he fall down in one of these simple ruts? Well, number one, he's probably frustrated because of what happened during the heat race, and he falls down multiple times in the main event here, but he dabs that foot. Dabs that foot, and as soon as he dabs that foot, rear end is trying to go over the berm, and the front end just tucks, and he goes down. All because of dabbing that foot. In the mud, you need to keep your feet as high as possible because if the mud is going to slow you down, it's also going to stick whatever extension you have outside of that motorcycle. If it's an arm, if it's a leg, whatever, it's going to drag you down. <laughs> Man, to add insult to injury, he goes down, and he's in the main line here, and where does Sexton go? Sexton just tries to run over his bike. Good thing it didn't do anything to his bike. Could you imagine if it took part of the case with it or something and he didn't win the main event because of it? You could definitely tell that there is no lost love there whatsoever from him basically, I wouldn't say losing his ride from Honda, but probably not getting the bonus that he wanted in amongst other things. Yeah, there's some speculation there. Don't think Sexton was happy at Honda whatsoever. So congratulations to him for winning on the KTM again. It's just pretty funny that you have the rider that is primed to win the series getting lapped. Yes, it's the mud. It's a one-off race. You'll see guys have their best finishes ever at a mud race like last year you had max anstey win 
the big mud race. So, and he wasn't able to follow back up. Yes, he got podiums, but that's just going to be my analogy there. And in closing, watch Cooper and Ferrandez <laughs> seat bounce some jumps and just have a little bit of a, a bucking Bronco deal. These ruts look so bad. Let's just pray to the weather gods that no more rain ever happens in an open stadium for the rest of the season because we don't want to see another mud race. We don't want to see this happen again. Got it out of the way. Cool. Moving on. But watch Cooper. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Definitely save. Here, watch it one more time. Just comes in super hot. Just totally gets kicked. You can tell how big that kicker is. Look at him back on the bike. Big ol' kicker. He's going for an endo. Lands perfectly in the next rut. Oh, almost takes out Dylan as well. Leans on him. Thank God Dylan was there. Need to go give him a hug in the pits for saving you. <laughs> As like a guardian angel. And then what does Dylan do coming around the outside trying to get back around Coop here? He ends up darn near doing the same thing here in this next lip. Whoa! <laughs> oh, man. Till next time, guys, hit that subscribe button, and I'm going to have some more videos coming out this week starting tomorrow. Brah!